asked about the Obama doctrine, which is often characterized as don't do stupid stuff, Clinton replied, great nations need organizing principles and don't do stupid stuff is not an organizing principle. And while the president has maintained that arming the Syrian rebels or deploying U.S. troops there would not help to turn the tide in Syria's bloody civil war, Clinton suggested a lack of action gave rise to ISIS, the terror group now rampaging across Iraq. The failure to help build up a credible fighting force of the people who were the originators of the protests against Assad. There were Islamists, there were secularists, there was everything in the middle. The failure to do that left a big vacuum which the jihadists have now filled. Hillary Clinton once again finds herself backtracking over comments made about President Obama. We are once again in the heat of a makeup session, and the administration is heading back to the tired old line about it being the fault of George Bush. You know what this means. Welcome back to Midpoint. Veteran political analyst and commentator Dick Morris joins us. Dick, always a pleasure, my friend. Good to be here. Any doubt in your mind whatsoever that despite the fact she says her remarks made in the Atlantic were not an attack on President Obama, that they were indeed just that? Yeah, of course they were. They were the beginning of a war. Uh, I think that Hillary may not have intended to go as far as she did. Uh, that line about don't do stupid things uh, is, uh, was mentioned by the reporter for Atlantic who was interviewing her earlier in the, sh in the show. And I think Hillary may just have picked up on it to try to establish that she was in sync with him. Uh, but nevertheless, whether it was a blunder or deliberate, it is the beginning of a shooting war. And I don't mean the one in Iraq and Syria, I mean the one in Washington. Uh, today there's a kiss and make up session at uh, Vernon Jordan's house in Martha's Vineyard, but that's just for the cameras. Uh, the fact is that Hillary has deliberately set about to differentiate herself from Obama in at least five different foreign policy regions. She says she would have been tougher on Iran. She said she would have stuck with Mubarak in Egypt longer. She would have armed the Syrian rebels. She would have put more troops into Afghanistan. And she wanted to have a prophylactic deployment force in Iraq uh, of 10,000 or so troops, all disagreeing with Obama all things we never heard a peep about while she was Secretary of State. But that really is an indication that she does not intend to run on her record as Secretary, but against the administration's foreign policy. Is it still not, though, something of a surprise that somebody who certainly knows Washington, knows politics, knows how the game is played, that once again, Mrs. Clinton seems to be bumbling in constantly trying to put some separation between herself and the president? It always seems to be something that she shouldn't have said. This should not be happening from an experienced politician. I think that's true. And I think that it's, worth, it's a tough road for her to articulate. It's a tightrope to walk. She was in charge of foreign policy, and now the foreign policy is a shipwreck, and she has to distance herself from it. But I do believe that uh, this reflects a lack of professional advice in her campaign. After I left and Mark Penn left, there really is no professional political consultant working with her, and you're seeing amateur mistakes that I think are the due to that. Let me go ahead and read something here that she also said in The Atlantic, and this is about the happy medium between aggressive posturing, which she likens to George W. Bush's administration, and focusing too much on actual withdrawal and speaking specifically about what's going on in the Middle East. Here's the quote from Hillary Clinton. You know when you're down on yourself and when you are hunkering down and pulling back, you're not going to make any better decisions than when you are aggressively, belligerently putting yourself forward. It's kind of got a pullback and a push forward there in that right now. It's authentic, isn't it not, Dick, that what people are saying because this constant back and forth maybe tells the possible voters that she's just not being authentic, that she's waffling way too much. Yeah, I think she is. I think that she's ignoring the first rule that we always set in the Clinton White House, which is the president never contradicted himself after doing so ad nauseum for the first two years of his presidency. Um, but the left is now closing in on Hillary, and that's the key thing. Obama is firing back. Uh, Media Matters, the left-wing group funded by George Soros, published a lengthy editorial attacking Hillary for criticizing Obama and saying she should focus instead on Bush's decision to invade Iraq in the first place. And I think that you're going to see a cascade now of negative stories about Hillary that'll come out of nowhere. They'll just appear in the media, but they'll be the Obama administration feeding it. Don't forget, J.D., they control the White House. I mean, I'm sorry, Ed, they control the White House. 
They are the people who know the State Department. They can get into the details, the travel records, the appointments, the patronage, uh, the policy positions, all of that stuff. And really, I think you're going to see a lot of anti-Hillary dirt coming from the White House. I am fully capable of always being uh, assumed to be a former upstanding congressman. Believe me, you can do that anytime you want, and I'll be very happy about that. You mentioned, of course, the withdrawal. We talked about that. We talked about George W. Bush. Now let's go to the president here. He is now saying that the Iraqi troop withdrawal was not my responsibility. Again, here's a quote. Under the previous administration, we had turned over the country to a sovereign, democratically elected Iraqi government. He is completely going back on what he said. And again, it seems as if there's not enough people actually calling him on it. Yeah, I think that's completely true. I think that this is so phony. Uh, the thing that he's citing, uh, obviously they could have pressured al-Maliki to keep the troops there and would have succeeded. The thing he's citing is the absence of a law by the Iranian parliament, by Iraqi parliament, exempting American troops that we would leave there from Iraqi law, so that if they killed someone, they couldn't be tried for murder. The same reason that in Benghazi, uh, so, uh, the, the ambassador there, Stevens, did, wanted uh, State Department personnel that would have immunity, not Defense Department people that wouldn't. But that's a charade. When we invaded Iraq and toppled Saddam Hussein, we didn't get his permission not to arrest American soldiers. We just invaded. And I believe that that's an absolutely flimsy excuse. But I want to make one other point about Hillary before we leave it in. She assumes she will have no Democratic primary. She assumes, as she did in 08, that she would waltz to the nomination. But politics abhors a vacuum. You can't be this close to the vested corporate interests. You can't be this close to crony capitalism. You can't be this close to a conflict of interest where your State Department approves speeches your husband makes that goes into your pocketbook. And you can't be this hawkish on foreign policy without getting a Democratic Party opponent. And it doesn't have to be Superman. It can be a Nebish. It can be Sanders. It can be um, um, O'Malley. Uh, but he'll draw an unexpectedly high share of the vote. And that'll trigger the entrance of a real candidate like Elizabeth Warren, just as Eugene McCarthy triggered Bobby Kennedy's entrance against Lyndon Johnson in 1968. Despite the fact that she seems to have so much support on her side, would it be your understanding and your guess that what's happening right now in the Democratic Party leadership, that they are looking at all of these things, they're watching very closely, they're hearing what I call the lack of authenticity, and that they are already making their plans to move forward without Hillary Clinton? I think that's a reach, but I think they're beginning to think in that direction. There's a wonderful quote by Christopher Reeve, the for speaking of Superman, and he said, things that are impossible then become improbable and then become inevitable. And that's the cycle we're looking at here. Let me also ask you then about President Obama and a comment that he made this week. He was angry at lawmakers who suggested in a private meeting that he should have armed the Syrian rebels. Uh, rebels rather. He called the criticism horse, and he used an expletive there as well, which I think we all know what he would have meant. But it basically does seem to indicate that the president is not enjoying the current criticism. Ed, I thought this was cable TV. You can say that, can't you? <laughs> Let's put it this way, Dick. I could <laughs> say it, but I'm not yet. going to. <laughs> this, is a, this isn't network. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I my friend. Mm, mm, I'll, let, if, I'll tell you what, Dick. If you want to go ahead and say it, you can not no, me, brother. No, no, I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it for you. <laughs> but listen, I think just to address the substance of it first, uh, it is perfectly true that there was a benign, secular, democratic, liberal, um, rebel movement in Syria uh, alongside the jihadists. But to believe that we could have armed the one to defeat the other is ridiculous. Uh, we're not omnipotent. And that we could distinguish the one from the other with clarity, that's ridiculous too. In fact, the more arms we pumped into Syria, and we did pump some, they end up on the battlefield in Iraq with ISIS shooting at us with them. Uh, but to get back to the president. About 30 seconds. There's a wonderful, the, sometimes presidents are joyful and sometimes they're bitter. And I saw Clinton go, become bitter in his second term. And I think you're seeing Obama becoming bitter. 
and it makes for a very unattractive president and will hasten his decline in ratings. But he may take Hillary with him. It does make for a very unattractive president. However, it does make for wonderful sound bites and makes for great reasons to continue to talk if about the presidency them, on a daily basis. If you'd use the sound bites, Ed. I'll tell you what, I'm going to ask you. <laughs> you go ahead and clear the use of it. I'll use it here. You come on with me. We'll make sure that both our names are on it. All right? Okay. <laughs> That's what I thought. All right, Dick, thanks so much for joining us, my friend. Take care. Thank you. All right, later on this hour, time to ask ourselves if we are prepared as a nation and a people to do what is necessary with regard to the latest terrorist threat. And after the break, the reality of PTSD and what decades later we are learning from those who served in the Vietnam War. It's all right here on Midpoint, where every day we question everything.